what good trial lawyers do. You saw a well-executed plan from the Manhattan DA's office to allow the, inter the introduction of certain cell phone records, text messages, emails, bank statements. It all was the corroborating evidence that allowed Michael Cohen to stand on his own, on his own testimony, and not have to worry that there was nothing underneath him in terms of a foundation to be able to talk about what happened, because his credibility, as we know, is going to be an issue. But we also didn't hear very, we heard very few objections today. Yes, right. that was interesting. In the no transcript. sidebars for yeah. incredibly right. aggressive defense that we've seen. No objections. So what was the import of that? It was a free-flowing, well-paced, mm -hmm. clean, succinct, direct examination today. Michael Cohen was afforded the opportunity to drive the narrative forward the way that the DA's office wanted him to do. And the jury was taking notes intensely. There were at least three of them that were feverishly taking notes and looking. And that's the last thing I would say. The visual aid of having that exhibit displayed on the screen in addition to when the audio tape was played of the famous I secretly recorded Donald Trump thing mm -hmm. accompanied by the transcript, it is so effective because jurors just sit and they sit as we do. Mm -hmm. And then they see something and they feel the engagement. So when yeah. they go into the jury room to deliberate, people's 35 is something they're going to tangibly have. Mm -hmm. And they'll look at the handwriting. But more importantly, they'll see. It matches with essential consultants. It matches with the 135. It matches the wire to Keith Davidson. It matches the gross up. Everything fits. And then today they left to recess today. And the last thing they heard was Donald Trump participating in the conspiracy. Does it matter that?